3. Daniel at chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Let me, uh, let me set the stage for you before we begin to read. Uh, the whole chapter is dedicated to three Christian men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were under the king's leadership, Nebuchadnezzar, in a country called Babylon. The Lord was putting his justice upon the country of Israel. He was... Uh, making sure that they uh, were in there for a period of time of 70 years. They had gone to idolatry. They had gone to worship other things. And God, in his discipline, took the country of Israel and sent them into Nebuchadnezzar's camp of Babylon to be there for 70 years. And in that 70 years, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were very smart Hebrew boys and they were promoted up the ladder in the kingdom. And in doing so, they were well known to King Nebuchadnezzar. But the king got it to his heart one day that he wanted to build a golden calf. And he wanted everybody to worship the golden calf. Now, he says quite blank in these verses that he knew who God is. He knew who the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was, but he wanted everyone to worship him. He wanted to be number one. He wanted to be the king that everyone would worship and idolize. And when certain sounds were made, everybody was supposed to bow down and worship the king. And so it was that the decree was made that whoever would not do so, I'm talking to everyone in the whole country when they heard the sound. If they did not bow down and give homage to the king, that they would surely die. Well, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were Christians. They were out there a bit. You know, they didn't bow down to the status quo. And they wouldn't bow down to the false idol. And they told the king... I know in certain terms that we may die, but we're not going to worship your golden calf. We're not going to worship your false idol. They stuck out in the crowd. And in verse 13, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Verse 14 says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you not serve my gods, nor worship my golden image, which I have set up? Now this is their response in verse 15. Now if you be ready that at time ye shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, set, Sackbutt, our palmistry, our domachar, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast into the same hour into the midst of a fiery, burning, fiery furnace. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of the hands? And in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it would be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, if not, there was always a possibility that it may not happen. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Well, then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men 
that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, in their hosen, in their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the fire furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire, fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded. He rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they that have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. He knew who God was. He said the fourth one is like the Son of God. And Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire, and the princes and the governor and the captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair, no hair of their head singed, neither their coats charred, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree. It's amazing how things change. Verse 29. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, language that would speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Because there is no other God that can deliver this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We thank you, Lord God, for your wonderful illustration in real life, how you are the God of protection. You are the God of all peace. You are the God of all tranquility. You are the God of all power. You are the God of everything, and nothing happens without your knowledge, Lord God. Nothing goes forth without you knowing it, Lord God. And, and Lord God, even in the midst of the fieriest of times that we will ever have in our life, Lord God, we are promised this one thing by your wonderful illustration today, God, that you are going to be in the midst of whatever fiery furnace we're in, no matter what it is that we face, Lord God. We praise you and thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful illustration. And it's in your holy name we pray, and every man would say, Amen. The king had made his decree. The golden image was there for everyone to worship. But three men decided in their hearts they could not do it. They could not do such a thing because it would be dishonoring the Most High God. And gentlemen, somewhere in your life and mine, in our character building, we have to come to a decision are we out to please ourselves? Are we out to please men? Or are we out to please God? Somewhere in the heart of our hearts, we have to make a decision. What are we doing in this life? What are we doing to, in our lives to be able to be changed into the likeness of Christ? Are we going to follow the images of this world? Are we going to follow the fallen idols of this world? Or are we going to put our trust, our hope, and everything that we are in the risen God? Amen? Amen? And here the three Hebrew boys are, and they went against the culture. They went against the prevailing tide at the time. To disobey the king they knew could mean death. 
But it didn't matter. You see, if the king was asking him to do something that was, wasn't against the Bible, it would have been okay. But you see, the, the king crossed the line. And the king no longer allowed them to worship their God, but, but said, now I want you to worship my God, my statue. And somewhere in our character building as men, we have to be able to stand firm on the word of God and say, no, I'm not going into the bar. I'm not going over there to the drug house. I'm not going over to there where the gangs are. I'm not going over there where I know things are going bad. But I am going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to honor my God. And I put myself in a predicament by being in a liquor store that I know is going to cause me trouble. Amen. And so he says, they said they would not honor this false God. And so much of what I see as a minister as I go around the state and I see even at my workplace at what people's opinions are. They don't stand for anything these days. A man doesn't stand for hardly anything. Everybody wants to go with the status quo. We, everybody just wants to get along. Everybody just wants everything to coexist. But God's not in the coexisting business. He's in the God-honoring business. He's in the glorifying God business. He's in the salvation business. And to honor Him, to glorify Him, is what we were created to do. And yet this world will sit there and say, can't we just all get along? No, there's a line drawn in the sand where somewhere along the way, a man's got to make a decision in his heart. It says, no, you, the world may go and do what it wants to do. But as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to give in to the things of this world, nor the way this world is going. But I'm going to stick with what I know. And that is the word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him rule and reign in my life. Let the Holy Ghost that lives within me teach me the things that I need to do. And in all things, I'm going to worship God, the creator of heaven and earth. And I'm going to let nothing get in the way of that. But society would come against me, Shaq. Shadrach and Abednego and said why don't you just why don't you just bow down to this God it's not going to cost you nothing why don't you just go along with the status quo why don't you just go along with what everybody else wants to do why do you got to be different why do you got to cause trouble and why do you got to cause difficulties why, why do you got to be causing this stink would it be too much for you three guys just to say, you know what, we're going to get along with the rest of society. We'll bow down at the statue, the golden image. And that's what society wants you to do. But we as Christian men have to stand on the word of God. We're called to stand on the beliefs of God and what God has for us. If they would have bowed down to the golden image and if they would have worshipped Nebuchadnezzar's image their testimony as Christian men would have been worthless it would have been worthless because it would have just shown the rest of the world you know what there's no difference between a Christian man and an unsaved man they do the same things there's no difference but they had it in their heart that there, were, there was a difference that the power of God rested within them. That if they were going to die, die even to the situation that they were in, it didn't matter to them because they would be in glory with God. If God takes us, hey, we're there with God. If not, we're not going to bow down and worship this false idol. But they had it all worked out ahead of time that they were not going to bow down. They stuck to their testimony. And even if they would have died in the fire, even if they would have died in the fiery furnace seven times hotter than normal, their testimony would have rang through the hills and the cities of Babylon. That there were three Christian men who were willing to stand for God, 
who were willing to stand on what the Bible believes. And they were not going to allow anything to get in the way of that. They weren't going to go down with society. They weren't going to give it to the prevailing times. But they were willing to stick their neck out and say, it don't matter, my God is worth it. My God is worth it. And so they didn't do that at all. But they decided that they were going to be standing on God's, the cornerstone, the rock. And as they were put into the furnace fires, the fiery furnace, they didn't know if they were going to live. They didn't know if they were going to get out of there alive. But in faith, they were willing to wake their faith, put into action. If you read the book of James, it says faith without works is dead. Your faith has to have some works to it. There has to be some substance to your faith that it means something, that there's something there for the unsaved world and the rest of the world to see that you're not like the rest of the world, that you're different. There has to be something there. And they just acted in faith and said, you know what, I'm going into the fire. I'd rather die to serve my living God rather than fall down and worship this false idol and have God's fury against me because I'm not worshiping him anymore. But they were in the midst of the fire. And as they were in the midst of the fire, the king looked into the fiery furnace. It had to have been a way up because the men that were next to the furnace, it was so hot that they died because of the heat. But the king looked, and it says in verse 20, 21, Then these men were bound in their coats and their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because of the king's commandment, the urge of the fire furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire slew those men and took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the thing, True, O king. Well, then verse 25, he says this, Oh, glory be to God. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed. I don't see the three men, but I see Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, in the midst with the other three men. They're not by themselves in the midst of that fire. They're not all by themselves to suffer the shame and the consequence of not bowing down to the false idol. But Jesus was there right along with them. He said, You know what? You are going to stand on the word of God. I told you I would never leave you nor forsake you. You may be in the midst of the burning fiery furnace, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to be there with you. That's the God we serve. No matter what you're going through. No matter how high the temperature is turned up in the furnace. No matter what you're going through. Some of you are going through a hot furnace. Some, some of you are going through Maybe the first seven times hotter than normal. No matter what you got going, no matter how hot the furnace is in your life, if you have Jesus Christ, He's walking there right along with you. He's right along with you. You say, boy, man, brother, this is a real hot furnace I'm walking through. And Jesus is holding your hand. He said, yeah, I know. I'm walking through it with you. I know how hot it is. But Jesus is with you. And God will honor the fact that you honored him. He'll honor that. Because Jesus himself said, if you're not going to honor me before men, I'm not going to honor you before the Father. But they did. And even in the midst of the fire, there were four men. And Nebuchadnezzar knows. He said, that fourth one, that looks like the Son of God. That looks like the Son of God. So he knew who God was. He knew who the real God of Creator was. He knew who the real God of the Hebrews were. He knew who the God of, the, of everything is. But he chose in his heart to worship himself. 
He chose in his heart for everyone to worship him. And in doing so, he fell apart. The book of Proverbs tells us that pride goeth before the fall. That a man will puff himself up and think so much of himself and then all of a sudden it will fall. And the man will fall who's puffed up full of pride. And then Nebuchadnezzar says this in verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst, out of the midst of the fire. And the princes and the governors and the captains and all the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire had passed on them. They realized, they saw God in action. They saw the God that you and I serve pulled three men out of a fiery furnace seven times hotter than normal, and not a single thing was done to them. Not a single thing. But Nebuchadnezzar realized that the Most High God is God, and that his silly idol, his silly false idol of gold that he made was foolish compared to God. He come to a real understanding that he's just a mortal man, that he could just die at any time. He realized and had a realization that he's not God. He's not God, nor is he worthy to be worshipped. And in reality, gentlemen, the only reason why he's king of Babylon is because God allowed him to be there. He, God could have allowed anybody to be the king, but he allowed Nebuchadnezzar to be that man. But listen how things changed because three men, three Christian men stood in a time when a country was falling, when a country was idolizing and worshiping a false god. I will remind you that Daniel did not worship the false god either. The god Daniel, the, the author of this book, also worshiped the true god. But the account of this passage has to do with the other three. But Daniel himself too. And there were probably other people that didn't. They probably weren't the only three that did it. But they're the ones that God used for this prov providence for this period of time. Then Nebuchadnezzar, this is the king of Babylon saying this now. He said in verse 28, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his sermons that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. The king would have never have come to this realization had it not been for the faith of these three Hebrew boys that were willing to stand on their faith. If it wasn't for the fact they stood on their faith, were willing to die for the sake of Christ, were willing to die in this fiery furnace, this king might have never realized the strength and the power of Almighty God. But he came to the realization because three men in a time when Israel was in foreign land, captive, being disciplined by the Lord for 70 years, away from their own country, in a foreign country. Three men who could have easily just requiesced and just did whatever the king wanted in a foreign country, knowing that they could just die. Said, we may be in another country, we may not be back at home where we like to be, but we're still going to serve God. We're still going to serve God. And it tells me that you and I, no matter where we go, wherever God puts our feet, we're still going to worship God. We still need to worship Him. We still need to praise Him. We still may be the only Bible that any man, woman, or child may ever see. We still may be the only beacon of light that someone will ever know. 
Gentlemen, that could be you, and that could be me. Verse 29, therefore I make a decree. Now this is the king making this decree. This is a law. That every people, nation, language, which spake anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cut into pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Because there is no other God that can deliver this sword. Gentlemen, may I remind you, this is an unsaved king. This king doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He's not a Christian man, but he has seen Christianity before him. He has seen the power of God in front of him, and he's saying, there is no other God that could deliver like this God. And some of you today are in the fiery furnace. Some of you today, you don't know Jesus Christ and you're facing the furnace all by yourself. And you're ready to go to the fire furnace, whatever it is that's going on in your life. And Jesus has said, call upon me because I can deliver you out of this sword. Call on me, I can help you. I can walk through whatever you're going through. I'm thinking like this, you know, Pastor Mike is a real simple guy. I'm sitting there thinking this. If, if Jesus Christ could be in a fiery furnace seven times hotter than normal to be with three Hebrew boys, how much easier is it to take care of whatever's going on in your life? How much easier can it possibly be for him? But the Bible says you've got to call upon his name. You've got to call upon this great Savior. You've got to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You've got to call upon him. You're going to call upon him in your time of need. Because either you and I can face the troubles and the, the fiery furnace of our life by ourselves or we can have Christ. And he's pleading with you today, just begging with you today and saying, stand for Christ. Come to know him as Lord and Savior. Don't walk out of here the same way that you walked in, but know him as your Lord and Savior. Don't let the prevailing society tell you you have to do things their way. Christianity is always swimming against the stream. Christianity is always going to be different. Christianity will always tell you to make a decision and to stand, have courage and have boldness to be able to stand on the word. And gentlemen, there are some of you today you don't know Christ. And if you were died today, you don't know where you would spend eternity. Don't let this moment pass you by. But I want to pray for you that you would come to know the living God, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the same God that helped these three men. It's the same God that wants to help you. He's the same God that wants to help me. But you got to call on him. You got to call him. Let's bow and pray. Bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this 445. We thank you for your holy, infallible word. And we thank you, Lord, for every man that has come out today. Lord, I know that there are men here today that don't know you as Lord and Savior. But today they can. Is there any men that would want to raise a hand and say, Today I want to know this Jesus that you're talking about? Any hands today? Amen. I see your hand in the back. I see your hand. I want to know this Jesus. Come up to me. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you to receive Jesus into your life. I'll be more than happy to do that. I'll get you out of here so you don't miss the meal. I'm honest. If you have any other prayer needs, come on up. I'll pray for you. But Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are making a decision for you today. Lord, that in their hearts they would say this very simple prayer. Lord, knowing that I'm a sinner, and that you died for sinners. I receive you, Lord, into my heart. I receive you, Lord, into my life. I ask you, Lord God, to have the Holy Spirit of God live within me, to change me from the inside out. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, but if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord, I pray that prayer today, that that would be, a, that would be me. Help me to be the man of God you call me to be. Be my God and my Savior. Work mightily about to flee in my life. 